everybody and welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Now we are on a massive time constraint. So today I'm not going to go on about how this is the show, the show with the bloke in the hat and the bloke next to him who's really pretty and got a beard, because that would be wrong. That would be time wasting. I'm not going to do that at all. Good. I'm proud of me. I'm proud of me. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to do a really short intro today to this amazing lady called Louise Miller. She has come on. She has been absolutely amazing. And I've got to warn you that this is the lady that I keep going on about who is everyone else's Jessie. Because she helps people with all the stuff that Jessie helps me with. And honestly, when we did the interview, and then at the end of it, we did the recording for the Patreon page as well, where Jessie got to ask Louise questions. And that bit, mate, that was so interesting for me. Yeah, and and I come to the conclusion that I might need Louise so that she can not only be everybody else's Jessie, but she can be Jessie's Jessie. I think you actually need a Jessie's Jessie, right? I do. Because you are becoming more poorly. Well, I've always been very poorly. It's just that I can be not poorly for poorly. You can be not poorly for longer than poorly can be not poorly. Yeah. I think I've confused myself. Does now. anybody know what's going on anymore? <laughs> should, should, should we, we just go to Louise and stop we, procrastinating? And then we, and then, um, ladies and gents, we'll go for a quick break. Then it'll be the interview with Louise. See you in a minute. Newton's Nuggets. I'm Amy Eve. Some of you may know me from my Twitch channel, but it's now been left to rest. If you don't know who I am, well, hi, I'm Amy, and I'm an ex-Twitch partner, and I'm going to help you grow your channel to the next level. Now, let's make one thing clear. I am not taking over or forcing your channel to be a copy of someone else's. I'm simply here to help you be the best you and guide you through all the important parts, such as viewer average, follow growth, how to get more revenue, and dealing with those pesky no all viewers along with teaching you how to stream without it taking up your whole life. Want to know how to become the best? Click the link to find out more. Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Now, we have a young lady with us today who is absolutely awesome. I'll be honest, I meet a lot of people at networking events. I don't have much time in my life. But I met this lady and I wanted to spend some time with her. So we ended up doing like a half hour Zoom call that turned into a ridiculous amount of time. It definitely wasn't half an hour. And we had to stop ourselves because we had other appointments on later. And both of us went, oh, no, no, too long. Let's go. So if it's all right with you guys, I want to introduce you to the lady that I have been telling everybody. She's like Jessie, but for other people. OK, so ladies and gents, here is Louise Miller. Louise, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you yeah. so much for what an amazing introduction. Lovely to see you. Mate, I, honestly, I just like your attitude and I like your attitude to the work you've been doing as well. And I know I know, me and you chatted a lot about it when we had that Zoom cup of tea. Um, but I kind of want to get across to people what it is you honestly do for your clients. OK, so the first question I'm going to ask you is the one that I warned you about, which is who are you? What do you do? And why should people listen to me and you chat for about half an hour? Okay, so I'm Louise Miller, as you already know, and I help busy, overwhelmed, purpose-led business owners who want to run a fulfilling business, but without burning out. So what I do is help them to find order in the chaos. I take everything that's going on for them right now, all of their fabulous ideas, and we break all of that down so that it's really easy for them to take action on what's important. And why should people listen to us? Well, over the years, I've seen way too many really amazing, brilliant people with really amazing and brilliant ideas who struggle to get them done, which means that the world is missing out on all of their fabulousness. So, you know, I see people who really want all the good F. So they want a business or a life that is financially flourishing, that functions and flows smoothly, that's fulfilling and that's fun. But they're actually experiencing all the bad Fs. So they're frantic, they're frazzled, frustrated, just really fed up. So you know, my approach to getting things done is very different to a lot of people out there. So I think that our conversation today, Paul, is really going to help, particularly if folks are feeling overwhelmed and like there's too much to do and not enough hours in the day. See, I think there's a couple of Fs you missed out there, but I, we're keeping this family friendly, right? Yeah. So um, 
So um, the, when I mess things up, there's a certain F that Jesse uses sometimes. I don't believe um, that. Surely not. <laughs> he um, failed. I failed in that was that was the one. That was the one. I think Jesse's going to carry on editing the show now. It's all good. But yeah, right. You're right. Okay, because there's something going on in the last few years, and it's, it's further than a few years now where people seem to think that they're only going to be able to prove they're successful if they keep hustling and doing this get up at 3 a.m., work till 2 a.m. thing. And it winds me up something rotten. Now, don't get me wrong here, because before me and Jesse teamed up, there was a lot of things that I, I was very, very scattergun in my approach to pretty much everything. Whereas now, when me and Jesse talk about things, it's almost like I've got a good buddy sat there going, whoa, hold up. Why, why, why are you trying to promote every single thing that you're thinking of in any way when people are asking you for this? Why don't, why don't we aim at these things and pick a couple of the others to be a project on the side? And it's like, okay, I can, I can do that. And I'm seeing so much better results because I'm concentrating on certain things. Um, and I don't like the hustle and grind Thing. I don't like watching my mates and people that I care about go into almost, actually, you said it well, the burnout. I hate seeing that. And I can, I can see it from a mile off now. So how do we work together? If, if I didn't have a Jesse beating me up and telling me off, okay, how would we work together? What would your first thing to be to do with somebody who's blatantly a creative and can't stop his brain spinning? Yeah. Great question. Um, and I recognize everything you've just said as well. And I'm with you on the hustle mentality that's just been everywhere lately. And it, I mean, it might suit some people, but it's not for everyone. And we're being sold this thing that that's the only way to succeed. And I don't yeah. think that's true. So and I don't care if you buy a Bugatti or if you've got a private plane. I just could not give less of a monkeys. Yeah. That was close. That nearly got well beat there. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so, so what do we do? Yeah. What do you do with yeah. a new client? Well, the very first, if I'm taking it really back to basics, the thing that I think everyone needs to be doing that I do with my clients is we pause. <sighs> we take a moment, we take a breath and we go, hang on. <laughs> what is it I'm actually trying to achieve? Because what I see happens quite a lot when people are in that kind of must do all the things mode, is they try and speed up, they try and go quicker. They think the only way they're going to get everything done is if they do it more quickly. And that just contributes to the frantic, frazzled, overwhelm loop I see people get stuck in. And the only way out of that overwhelm loop, I think, is to pause. And in that pause, if we use that pause well, you can then get into a much more helpful cycle of taking action and making progress and you know focusing on the right things. So it's always about the pause to start with. And the first thing to do in that pause, I think, assuming that your nervous system is okay, you know, if you need to take a break and a rest, go do that first. Once you've grounded yourself and anchored yourself back in, check back in with your vision or your mission, your purpose, whatever it is, that language that works for you about the big thing that you are trying to achieve. Whether that's something big and lofty that you want to see out in the world or whether that's a vision just for how you want to be feeling day to day and how you want to be living your life day to day. Because in my opinion, when we get clarity on that and we allow ourselves the pause and the connection into that, yeah. Everything else comes from it and it makes decision making so much easier. So it's all pause, vision, start there. That's amazing. Right. You've hit, you've hit a couple of things there. Number one is your idea of pause and take a breath. It's something that me and Jesse uh, advocate for when people are in the middle of being scammed. Because th these, these absolute scumbags try and put loads of pressure on you yeah. to make you make quick choices. And, and something that, that we came up with was the take a breath moment. Just take a deep breath, release it, have a proper think to yourself without listening to them. And that's almost your pause mentality, but on people's lives, isn't it? Totally. Absolutely. Because we don't do our best thinking when we're not in that kind of centered, grounded place. And when we're in the frazzle, you won't be making good decisions, exactly as you said. You're going to feel the pressure and you're going to dive, jump and, you know, do things that are not going to serve you. And you just can't access that clarity of thought and that sense of perspective no. unless you allow yourself to stop for a minute. Yeah, yeah. and it's, you're right. It's allowing yourself. Yeah, and that is huge because we, we're brought up, a lot of us, in a culture that says you're only allowed to do that when you've done everything. 
you can only stop and go outside and play when you've done your homework, you know, when you've tidied your room. You and can only go a... to bed after you've cleaned up the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it's right. and so, ingrained, so... this programming, that resting is lazy and we need to have finished everything before we allow ourselves to rest. Oh, I love you, Louise. Resting is not lazy. Sometimes we need it, especially it if you've got most... a brain that works like mine. Yeah, the most productive thing we can do for ourselves quite often is to rest. Do you know what? Sometimes, right, I'm going off on a tangent on my own here, and uh, sorry. Um, sometimes if I've got an issue that I've got to work through, I'll write down a note about it before I go to bed because my brain happily works these things out while I'm asleep and then I wake up and go, I've got it, and I write down what I want to do. Yeah. Whereas I was constantly told that's the wrong way to do it. You know, you've got to figure this out now and then let yourself sleep afterwards. Why? Why? I might as well just go to sleep and relax and I don't have to. Um, and I've been there. Yeah, it's horrible. I had a really stressful before I started doing this. I was um, managing a team of five. It was really stressful. It wasn't for me at all. And I was actually really unwell with it. And I was trying to solve the problem with a big sheet of paper and a pen in this state of absolute actually unwellness going must find the solution because I like to problem solve. Didn't yeah. work. Of course, it didn't work. You know, and it, what worked was my doctor signing me off ill unfortunately shouldn't have got to that point but it was only from taking that step away that I could get the clarity to go okay this is what you need to do Louise and yeah but isn't that, that that it's just oh how can I put it experience and knowledge yeah and and the horrible thing is that if I turn around to a younger Pauline and said just stop and back off and look at it from a different perspective I know that younger Paulie would go no no got to get it done got to get it done got to, you're old you don't understand I'm going to get it done this way yeah. Oh, mate, right. Something else I just realised from what you were saying. Um, myself and Jesse often have production meetings about things at one of our houses, okay? So we'll meet up to plan or to think about a certain thing. Now, when we start that meetup, pretty much every time now, and I'm just realising this while we're in this interview, and people who know the show well know that you'll be able to see me and Louise on the YouTube channel. You won't see Jesse because he's hidden, but I can see him. There's a little screen with him on it, right? I've just realised that every time we do these meetings, the first thing Jesse does is, what should we get to eat? Let's let's just get something to eat first. We'll get, we'll get a nice little something, whether it's, you know, from a bakery or it could be dinner or it could be lunch. It's, I, mean, so I think that's his way of stopping me and making me pause and think about something that isn't the work stuff without me realising it. Perfect. <laughs> Sneaky. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, just the very act of the two of you getting together and doing that is the pause as well, isn't it? Because you're taking a step away from what you're doing and starting that process of being in a different right. environment as well. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah, really powerful. I think I'm going to enjoy this interview because I'm going to work out all of Jesse's tricks on how to manage the poorly. <laughs> this is amazing and wrong all at the same time. Okay, so how did you end up getting to where you are? How did you end up becoming the person that helps everyone else with it, with their weird world? Yeah, it's been a twisty, turny road, as I think it has for most of us. Um, and I've already alluded to the kind of the beginning of it was back when I was in that exhausted state, working at university, managing this team of five, which was, I think I started there in 2009. Yeah, 2009. And it was in 2015 that everything started to really go wonky. So have a really, really clear, you know, sometimes something happens and you can just really visualize it really clearly. I was sitting in my office, I had a beautiful view of a brick wall. My eyes were just absolutely bursting out of my head because, you know, sitting under fluorescent light all day, that's always nice. Yeah, that's, that's helpful. To blink, you know, <laughs> you're just staring at the computer with all the emails coming in every five minutes. And I just decided I needed a glass of water. So I stood up took sort of 15 paces from my office to the kitchen. And during that 15 paces, this question just popped into my brain, which was, Louise, why are you always rushing to get everything done? And that felt like a real bolt out of the blue, because in that moment, it seems so obvious now, but in that moment, I realized that I would never have got everything done. I'm never going to be done. There is always going to be more to do. And the trap I'd fallen into in that particular job, in fact, if I look back, probably all of my jobs before that, was being really good at my job. 
and then they give you more to do and they keep giving you more to do. So it doesn't matter how quickly you're doing it and how efficient you are. You're just going to keep getting more to do. So for me, that was this massive light bulb moment. And it really planted a seed that there might be a different way of doing things. So I got really curious at that point and went and consumed everything I could find about slowing down. Mm-hmm. And it was opening my eyes to the slow living movement, which is a whole other conversation, but that completely changed everything for me. Um, but of course, I didn't actually change anything. <laughs> I read all this stuff. I went, oh, very nice. And then stayed in my stressful job. Um, it took a real full on kind of meltdown before I actually plucked up the courage to quit, which came in the form of um, just absolute exhaustion and going into going into a really important big meeting. Someone asking me how I was which is the worst thing they could possibly have done. And me just completely melting, bursting into tears, big, ugly, horrible sobs. I just couldn't stop. And that was the point where I was like, yeah, no, this is not okay. Something's got to change. So that was when I then, you know, shortly after that was signed off work by my GP because I didn't have the capacity to make that decision in that state of absolute overwhelm and exhaustion. But it was the best thing that could have happened. Um, I wish it hadn't got to that point, but it allowed me to step back and gain that perspective. So eventually summer 2016, I quit my job and yeah, it's been a kind of not a very linear journey to where I am, but joining the dots, it all makes sense. So, you know, I did some work as a copywriter. I worked as a VA. I worked with over 30 small business owners as a VA, did some productivity mentoring with online courses and things to teach people how to be more productive. And I loved all that, but they always felt like there was something missing. So what I was noticing from the conversations I'd been having with all of these fabulous business owners that I was having the pleasure to work with was what I was saying earlier about brilliant ideas, brilliant people struggling to get it done. Um, You know, they'd reached a certain level of success. There was loads going on. Maybe they were in a mastermind or they'd got a business coach. They were getting loads of inspiration, loads of information. What they weren't doing was the implementation. And that was where I knew I could help. So my business kind of evolved to what it is today from that kind of realization so yeah so that's where I now sort of help people I never I still don't know what I'm calling myself if you look at my LinkedIn profile it says calm kind clarity queen um, I'm a thinking partner I'm a planning partner it doesn't really matter what I call myself I'm sure one day I'll land on something but what really matters to me is that I'm getting to take what comes naturally to me to support really fabulous business owners to doing their you know, really important work in the world so they get to make the bigger impact that they're here to make and can see better results. So, But you kind of, you kind of are the calm to that nutcase of an entrepreneur. And, and I say that with as much love as possible because I know I'm one of the nutcases on the entrepreneur side. And, and I love the fact that I can turn to Jesse, I can turn to you, I can turn to people that I trust. My wife is not entrepreneurial at all. She, she's definite love her bubble of safety. So realistically, for, for the last 20 years, I've had her to be able to talk to, and she can give me a different perspective on it. For the last five, six years, I've had Jesse on my side as well. And, and I've now got a Louise who gives me another perspective on it as well. Mm. Um, I don't know. I think you're right. There's a something, there's a description that we're going to use for you at some point and you will just go, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. Um, I think the better Jesse gets known, what we'll do is we'll call you not Jesse. <laughs> there we go. I'll piggyback off Jesse. I'm happy with that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, I've been called this, a soothing bar more than once by those creative people who just spin around up here all the time. And it's, you know, what I always think about what I do is they're up here spinning around. I'm landing them, grounding it into reality so that the stuff actually happens in a calm, measured, intentional way rather yeah. than, a, oh, let's do all the things kind of a way. I like that. I really do like that. But also um, not trying to turn them into me because yeah. their spark and their creativity is what makes them fabulous. And we don't want to lose that along the way. So it's, there's a balance to be found. To keep and them it's, it's in weird their brilliance. Well, yeah. Because um, Jesse, when, when me and Jesse started on this part of the journey, he always said he wanted to be behind the camera, didn't want to be in front of the camera at all. And now he co-hosts a podcast with me. He's getting invited to do interviews on podcasts as well. And he's absolutely nailing it. Um, but still, if you talk to him one-to-one, he'll say, I prefer to be behind the camera. Yeah. It's it's Actually, he's just sent me a message saying, can we make Louise famous so I can hide? <laughs> that's, that's pretty much Jesse. Um, 
But I like that, Wayne. I like that. Right. And we're going to talk about a couple of bits. You mentioned to me earlier that you that you were making a free planning workbook at the moment. Now, am I allowed to tell people what that's called? Yes, absolutely. Please do. Thank you. Awesome. Right. The name you gave me was From Big Idea to Inspired Action. And I like that. I like that because I have so many ridiculous ideas all over the place. And then you don't take action on the ones that could actually be very powerful. So how do people get hold of that? Yeah. So I love the workbook. Even if I do say so myself, it's blooming brilliant because it takes, it it does what we spoke about before. It's the pause. It's the taking the pause going, what's my vision? What's my goals? How am I breaking it down? So you can go find that. It's completely free. It's at bettylouonline.com slash nuggets. See what I did there. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> I'm so happy. Jesse, Jesse, someone's made a link for us. <laughs> that, that's, it. that's it. That's it. I'm gone. I'm, I'm so chuffed, Louise. Thank you very much. There you go. You heard it here first. Anyone wants to impress me in the future? We need our own link from here on in. That's it. Okay. We're not taking any less now. Louise has set the benchmark. Okay. So you do provide that come. If I get this workbook, what am I what am I doing? Is it downloadable? Is it a PDF? It, yeah. it? It's a downloadable PDF. Um, yeah. And what I recommend is yeah, setting some time aside, giving yourself that pause, because I know what it's like with these things. We hear someone talk about something, we see it promoted, and we go, oh, I really need that. Download it. And then it sits on our inbox forever and ever and ever. Amen. And we never look at it. So <laughs> we've all done it. Um, but again, I feel seen, is- <laughs> Jesse, I feel seen. This is not for that. But, you know, if that if you feel like you need this in your life and you need this kind of clarity and focus that you get from planning and planning consistently and regularly, not just when things are feeling in chaos, I would really suggest at the same time as grabbing your copy of the workbook, put some time in your diary to sit with it, because these things will only work if you actually use them. So I'm a fan of printing things off and scribbling on them. So I would suggest making a lovely cup of tea, favorite beverage, sitting somewhere quiet um, and giving yourself half an hour you might want a bit more depends how much how much is going on in your brain um, mm. to sit with this thing connect back in with your vision think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish the workbook will has got space and encouragement to break things down into really teeny tiny steps um, and to start thinking about when are you actually going to do this stuff because it's all very well and good writing a list but the piece that is often missing which again is where I come in is the the when that goes alongside the what. So when are you going to do this stuff? Um, and remembering why this is important to you. Always, always coming back to why this is so important because that's what will keep you moving forward. Do you know what? The the closest that we have ever come to, a, a, I want to say an argument. An argument's a good word, actually. It was, it was the closest we've ever come to shouting at each other um, was possibly when I'd said that I'm going to start booking days out just to take a day off. And then every time that thing cropped up, something would appear and I'd go, that's more important. I've I've just got to get that done. And that's more important. That's got to get that done. And poor old Jesse literally turned around to me one day and went, right, this day was booked out as your day off. You're not touching your emails, are you? But but I just, I just went, no, you do not. And I swear he now talks to my wife about it as well. Ganging up can be a good that can be a good strategy (laughs) let's all gang up on people but yeah I've got clients exactly the same who do that who say they're going to take this break and then something more important will come along and it kind of saddens me that I have to do this sometimes but I have to we have to have a conversation about why taking that time out is good for your productivity and reframing it in that way and I had somebody once I was chatting to who really needed that space and we made it a work activity for her to go to a local cafe, sit under a tree with a book. And we put that, we talked about it in such a way that we could see the connection to how that was going to make her be able to problem solve and move forward with the things she was doing. And it's sad that we have to do that and play those sorts of mind games because we should just be okay taking a break. But if that's what we have to do, worth a try. I've just realised something else. <laughs> I've moved house recently. Jesse came over to move the rubbishy bits out of my office, so I had access to my bookshelf again. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's it. I'm watching him now. Thanks, Louise. Um, okay. We've got loads that I could talk about. 
but I am worried about your time, our time, editing time. How I want to understand the book itself. I think that's great, by the way. I love the idea of this book. But what I'm worried about is people won't get the full Louise out of the book. Now, and please don't get me wrong. I love that you're giving away a free workbook here. But I don't, I don't think that's enough for people. What do they do next? Yeah, I love that you've, you've asked me that question. Thank you. Because I know what happens left to our own devices. We don't always do what we know is best for us. So we might know in principle that taking time for planning every month is going to help us to feel more focused, yeah, more and in control. Actually, it's even like you said, when you were in that stressful position, managing all those people and it wasn't right for you, you read a load about how to slow down and then you ignored it. Yep. <laughs> we all yep. do it. We do. Um, we do. And that is exactly why I created Make It Happen Club, which is a space where we all gather together every month and every quarter to sit and do our planning together. Because, you know, I know what a difference it makes to people's productivity when they do that, when they lift their head above the weeds every single month, check in with the vision and the goals and create these really spacious, flexible plans that are going to keep them focused and taking action. And I know that people, they, they can do it. It's not that they can't do it. They just don't do it when they're left to their own devices, exactly as you said. So Make It Happen Club is there to provide that space. And it's a really gorgeous, quiet space. It's the antidote to the busyness and the noise that we all experience every day on planet Earth. Um, you know the members oh it's so lovely it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy just thinking about it but we come together and they all just snuggle into this quiet bubble of their own business so there's no distraction we're all together but there's no distraction by what everyone else is doing I don't yeah. want them getting shiny object syndrome and going oh that sounds interesting let me go do that which I think can happen quite a lot in group spaces so we don't do that <laughs> we just sit I guide the session I guide the framework for the planning we sit quietly we do it together by the end of the session you've got a plan in your hand that you can then go away and work with for the next month. So hold on, hold on. What, how is that situation created? Is it on a Zoom chat? Is it yeah, in a person? Is it? It's a Zoom. It's just a normal kind of Zoom call. We all gather together in Zoom, but everyone's on mute. The only voice you hear is mine. So we can see each other and there's a real sense of community and people do feel the support of that. But I'm the only person speaking until we get to the end. There's a tiny bit of sharing if people would like to. There's never any requirement to I always say it's not another place to show up where you have to feel you, you know, where you feel you have to perform in some way. It's not networking. It's not masterminding. It's you giving yourself the gift of this regular space to just sit, pause. Purposeful pause for powerful planning has a bit of alliteration for you. Nice. <laughs> to just sit and do that every month knowing. And, you know, again, this is a paid for service because when you're parting with some money, you're much more likely to show up right so I want people to show up and actually do the thing so yeah. it provides that space and that accountability and do you know what that's blooming clever as well because if I'm in a zoom meeting in my office then the phone goes off people can't call me on my mobile the only people that could potentially get hold of me is anyone that knows my landline home number and the only person that knows that number is my dad because he doesn't like calling mobile phones that's it OK, so the chance of anyone interrupting me during that time is so small, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, could it, yeah, I think for someone that to actually pull me out of that time, they'd have to get hold of my wife to say there's an emergency. So potentially my brother could do that. Yeah. I think that's brilliant because that will pull us out of the normal run round mill that we're used to being in without us realising you're almost forcing us to stop for a bit. And quite often people will show up and say to me, I was feeling so frazzled and frantic and just like, and something really bad had happened this today. And I was really in my head and it was really stressing me out. 90 minutes of sitting quietly, thinking about, you know, being guided to think about what's important in your business. Yeah. And moving forward towards the goals you're trying to accomplish just shifts people's mood. And, you know, they end the call just feeling really, grounded and full of you know possibility and positivity around what they can achieve in the month ahead it's it's pretty magical actually i like that and if you feel like sharing how much that is send me and jesse a message and we'll tell everyone <laughs> we don't mind doing that I'll send but you I, I, I really like that idea mate i really do um okay i, I think that's something that jesse might be booking me into at some point 
You'd be very well. And just smile at me, Jesse. That doesn't help. God. But, but yeah, I like that idea. Okay, so we can work with you on the workbook. We can work with you in, in your take time out pause moments. And you said that was 90 minutes. I like that. What about one-to-one stuff? Do you look after clients one-to-one basis? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So there's a tiny bit of one-to-one. If you join Make It Happen Club at a certain level, you get laser mentoring with me. But full to get the full kind of hand-holding partnership experience with me kind of as your right-hand person, um, yeah, that's called In It Together because I really do feel it's about partnering with the person that I'm working with, um, which is where, again, we go, we meet together every month. They tell me what's in their mind, you know, what they've got on their plate, what they've got coming up, what they've committed to. I look at their calendar with them and we figure out when are you going to do all of these things? Um, We talk about the time they've got available. We talk about the energy they've got available. We talk about what's going on outside of work and I help them find real clarity in what it is that they need to do to move them forward in the right direction. Quite often that involves letting go of some stuff because everyone wants to do all of the things by tea time and actually often that's not possible. <laughs> so um, there's a, letting go is a very big part of my work and the, what I do with people. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I'm the left brain to their right brain and I kind of, I'm at their side. And the thing I love about it, and I think that people really appreciate at the end of the session, I give them an action plan. So my brain that naturally looks for action steps and looks for teeny tiny things that people can be doing is doing all of that while they're just speaking and sharing what's going on and obviously we talk it through I don't surprise them with anything but I will put it all in a nice order or sort it all out for them so it's really logical makes sense and then hand it back to them and then they can just run with it so yeah that's the one-to-one work I like that so currently we've talked about three different ways you can work with people how you can help them and probably three different costs from the free to the one-to-one literally with you their right-hand person yeah See, for the type of person, I can only speak for somebody like myself at the moment, a very small business owner, um, a team of a couple of people, and one of them works far too hard for not much money at all. Sorry, Jesse. Um, but, but honestly, having that extra voice of reason that says, why? Why are you doing it that way? Why are you doing it this way? Is there a benefit too? That could be massive. Yeah, and it is also... That's a huge part of it. But the other surprising thing that I wasn't expecting when I started doing this work in this way a few years ago is the celebration aspect of it. It's having someone to go, okay, what? tell me what we're celebrating. What are your wins? Because people forget. You're so fixated on what it is that you're trying to get to that we forget all the great work that we've just done. And then we're not kind of giving ourselves credit. And that I love, I saw something in a TED talk, so it must be true, which is that, Uh, A brain in a positive state is 31% more productive than a brain in a stress negative or neutral state. So the more we can do to celebrate even the teeny tiny things is going to really set us up for success. It does great things for your self-belief, your self-esteem, your feeling of what's possible. So taking that time to reflect, and I know that it's only a tiny part of those sessions that I do, and I do it in Make It Happen Club and with one-to-one clients, we always celebrate. It's such a tiny part, but it's really, really important because people can see the progress that they're making even when they're not there yet, wherever there is for them. We we had a very similar discussion, I think it was last week, when I was being grumpy about some things not moving as fast as I thought they would, and, and a certain person turned around and went, where were we three years ago? That's, that's not the point I'm trying to make right now. Okay, so where were we three years ago? No, I'm not having this conversation. Two years ago, where were we? And it's like, okay, shut up. Shut up Me and Jesse, we can be really annoying. <laughs> I'm never letting you two have a cup of tea together. That would be bad. And I've just realised that I'm probably going to start a chat between the three of us so that Jesse can send you some images and things soon. Oh, no. <laughs> Ladies and gents, if you see Paul Newton being ganged up on by two certain people who are smiling and happy while they're doing it, just just buy me a a vodka shot or something. There we go. Right. Um, What I want to do now is I want to ask you that last question, the all-important question and the reason that the show is titled what it is. I want to ask you, what's your one nugget of information that you want everyone to walk away with? I reckon you can probably guess already what it's going to be. One of the very first things I said, which is about slowing down and pausing. I want everyone to just realize 
you know, yes, we want to succeed and we want to have success, but what does that mean for you, first of all? And also, we want to enjoy the ride, don't we? <laughs> Isn't that the whole point, you know, to enjoy the journey that we're on? So allowing yourself a pause so that you can acknowledge and appreciate how far you've come and so that you can get real clarity around what you're going to do moving forward. If everyone could just start doing that a little bit more consistently, I think they would notice a massive, massive difference. So taking a regular pause is the nugget I would like to share and preferably a purposeful pause for powerful planning, just because I love saying that and I wanted to say it again. <laughs> I love that. And I'm not going to try to say that. I'll probably end up swearing at people by accident. Um, <laughs> It would go very wrong. Seriously, Louise, thank you so much. This has been lovely. Um, and, and I think I've got more out of this interview than you would ever realise. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to go download that workbook because me and Jesse, after, after tonight, me and Jesse are downing tools and we're going away for a couple of days to act like nerdy geeks and play lots of video games. And I've got a funny feeling that Jesse might bring the workbook with him. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Ladies and gents, um, first of all, I'm going to ask Louise to say goodbye to everyone. Louise, go for it. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for having me. <laughs> she has been awesome. Right, we're going to go to a quick break, and then it's going to be me and Jesse talking about Louise behind her back, and she's not going to know what we say until she listens to the show. We'll see you in a minute. Newton's Nuggets. Welcome back, everyone. Right. Thank you so much to Louise. That was an amazing interview. I love how she helps types of people that are, well, a bit too much like me, really. Um, and De Jesse knows I, I have hundreds of ideas that are running around like absolute mad squirrel rabbits, cats that you can't herd together at all because sometimes the cats are arguing with the squirrels and the rabbits don't want to be with the cats and the rabbits don't like the squirrels as well. And it, it started again. Jesse, Jesse. At one point during there. that, you said the word rabbits and all I could think was, oh, frogs. <laughs> <laughs> Which just proves you've become too much poorly. Uh, I think the reality is is that um, like most people are that run businesses fall in one of two camps. They're either super good at at just doing and struggle, yeah. and those people tend to be the people who struggle with um, ideas. You know how I'm going to make this interesting on social media and stuff like that. <clears throat> yep. Yep. And you're, the other type of person is they're too good at coming up with the ideas and find it too difficult to turn them into something. Now, I know that me and Paulie are in that camp, and so we're great for the people who are the getting it done, you know, the getting it done type people. We're always friends with us because we'll yeah. sit there and go, have you thought about doing this? Here's a great idea. Do that. Do that. And it'll... The, It'll be great for them because they can come up, they can go, oh, those ideas are great, and they'll turn it into something useful and actually yeah. get it done. Um, whereas for people like you and me, we need somebody who will just go, let's take a step back and work out what it is that you actually want to achieve, and then yeah. which one of those ideas actually works for what you, you know, three or four of those ideas probably actually have something to do with what you're trying to achieve overall. And um, do you know what and, the, the thing and, is that we've never been the people who wouldn't go and do it. No, we, we, we have to focus, but then we go. Are we agreed? Yes. But we, we have go. an unusual situation where there are two of us, and we will keep each other in check quite a lot. Which is why you said I've got a Jesse to do those sorts of things, and that's why Louise is that person for other other people. And there'll be plenty of people who are sat there thinking, "Oh, well, I like." I like like the fact that I work on my own and, you know, do I need somebody else? And if you want advice and tips on how to help yourself in the first instance, go and join our Patreon, listen to the interview the bit that we did with Louise afterwards because we talked about that a lot during that. Um, but, if you, but the reality is, is that I've always said that it's really useful to have... This is why business coaches are so important because having that mentor there to have somebody and different types of business coaches are good for different things for me personally having um so i work with becca and uh, we've talked about yeah. in the past she works in a particular way that really helps me because she's helped me with 
doing similar things, not exactly the same style as Louise. But I really like Louise's style for people like me and especially like Paul for for keeping you on track and making sure you're doing the right things <coughs> and focusing and actually getting stuff done because we're too much like flipper to give it's going off the next crazy brilliant idea yeah and and something i'd love to her monthly uh 90 minute idea yeah of just take time out and it's yeah. guided and it's just you concentrating on you being you for you well, so well the thing is as big businesses do this they have management meetings and they have and part of those management meetings is discussing what direction is the business going are we all pulling in the same direction what issues have we got and which ones are actually important that we need to worry about as our from a managerial level rather than a day to day um and how do we sort those are we, you know where we come one of the biggest things that i think small businesses don't do very well is have that ongoing running of performance indicators and in a big business, the point of the performance indicators is to make sure everybody's doing their jobs so that you hit the big targets. What I found yeah. with small businesses is having those performance indicators are really good as a positive check to show how far you've come because it's a bit like weight loss. You know, everybody says, you know, you see somebody after three months of weight loss and you go, you've done really well. And they've seen it themselves on a day by day. They don't really realize how well they've done. It's exactly the same thing in business that people don't. <clears throat> you talked about it a little bit with Louise. I can't remember which bit, so I won't go into it in too much detail. But it's that thing of, you know, where were we three years ago? Where were we at the beginning of the year? Yeah, you know? that was that was when I mentioned that me and you literally talked about this last week. And I was a bit grumpy because certain things weren't moving as fast as I thought they should. And then we had the chat of three years ago, we didn't even have a book. Yeah. You know, two years ago, it had been, you know, the crowdfunder had happened. Yeah. One year ago, we've hit bestseller lists on Amazon and we've got this and we've got that. And now we're getting booked for international talks. Oh, no, 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 we're not. Aren't we? No, no. Not yet. Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> There's not sure which I'm allowed to talk about yet. <laughs> That's right. You've not mentioned any of them by name. It's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, good. Thanks. Um, but yeah, if, as a side note, talking of going off on tangents, mm -hmm. I know that people are going to listen to Louise's show and going to want to send us messages. Yes. Yeah. Whenever we have a great show, you know it's great. We know it's a great show when we're recording it, and then we know that we're going to get messages from people who listen, especially those who listen regularly. Yeah. Me and Paulie aren't available on the day of release or on the day after the day of release of the show because we're going to something that, if you've been listening for any at all over the last three months, you'll know we're going to something. We've been called advertising Nerdcon. Nerdcon. So we're not available. So. What would be a really clever thing for you to do is go and tell us how amazing the show is by leaving us a review somewhere. Anywhere. Anywhere. Well, maybe not any maybe not your own personal website or Facebook. But <laughs> <laughs> if you do, that's fine, but you need to tell us about it. Um iTunes, uh, Spotify, Audible, uh Amazon, any of those, please do. Facebook, we've got Newton's Nuggets page. Um, all of this stuff matters a lot to us because yeah, okay. We've we've talked about this in the last couple of years, but we know that people are watching us and watching this show. So those reviews mean a lot at the moment because there are some big companies watching what we're doing. Yeah. Um and if we get those guys as sponsors, it could mean that I don't have to hold the studio together with gaffer tape anymore. That's that's fair, isn't it? There yeah, you go. That's fair. <clears throat> um Right, on, on one of the last things on Louise's show was that is exactly what you get. Louise is just lovely. Okay, yeah. she really is. And if you, if you want to connect with her at all and talk about how you run your business, please do. If you're nervous of doing so, go download her workbook and see if you think that would work for you. I've got a copy of it. it. It's fantastic. Is it really? I haven't looked yet. But I'm not surprised that you've already got a copy. We've literally <laughs> just only done the interview, Jesse. That's, <laughs> and that's it's, Jesse. It, it's one of those things where you literally can sit down and have a. Because I, one of the things that, 
because I didn't want to make it purely my end of things because Louise was talking very good from a, a very well about a general business thing but one of the yeah. things that I find with um, creativity so for example the social media things um, and marketing in general is that you get your best ideas when you're not trying to think about an idea if you're and I think you do tr need to try, so you spend some time thinking about something. But that idea will come to you later. And like I, I always say, I I like to work, I like to work during the day for a few hours, and <coughs> give my t brain time to think. And I know that at some point at ten o'clock in the evening, I'm going to have two hours where I'm just going to sit at a whiteboard and throw all the creativity on there, and then I'll come to it the next day, yeah. and go, wow, I had some great ideas last night. Mate, do you know what? Sometimes my thought moments are while we're gaming. Yeah. While I'm playing Xbox with either you or some other buddies. And I'll sit there and just go, I've got it. I've worked it out. And I've got to write it down quick. But it's really difficult for small business owners to just... Because even if we talk a lot to our partners and they get bored of listening to you yab yabbering on, you don't have that same... You don't have the ability just to chew the fat for the sake of it, and sometimes that's when the great ideas come out. And somebody yeah. go, either you, you yourself, or somebody. You know, I find just explaining something, a situation. You go, oh, this situation is really annoying because, or if only I could come up with an idea that did this. And in doing that and vocalizing it and just chilling and having that that time, I know you really benefit from this from a few three of your buddies paul yeah uh, not just me but actually surrounding yourself with people that you can have those ideas with is really useful yeah it works mate it works it works really well um right we need we need to cut the show and if you don't have those people around you go and find <clears throat> louise and she'll make she'll be the the person around you to yeah. help you that good idea mate love that right um what else have we got to do today we've got to do nuggeteer of the week Yes, we do. Nuggeteer of the week. This one is... Um, what, uh, 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 uh. what? What? Jingle. It's time for the Nuggeteer of the week. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> let's, let's not forget to put it in this week. Shut up, Paul. Okay, so... Moving on to Nuggeteer of the Week. Nuggeteer <laughs> of the Week, for me this week, it, this, uh, this one makes me smile so much. Um, we picked this one because I put a post up on LinkedIn about the show and about how it's doing and the top five and my feelings towards the whole show. A certain young man called Guy, who was one of our interviews in the show, and he talked about things that were very important. And basically, he's still kicking the backside out of cancer. And he's an absolute inspiration to me. He's one of those blokes that I don't care what the situation is, I'd answer the phone to him straight away. Yeah. Um, but he shared it, he commented, he gave me some feedback, and he kicked me up the backside in a private message. <clears throat> so this week's Nuggeteer of the Week is Guy. Guy, thank you so much, mate, for everything you do. You are absolutely brilliant, inspirational, and one of life's top blokes. Thank you very much, mate. Jessica, yeah. happy Thanks, with that? One? Yeah, very happy. Awesome. I mean, it was a fantastic episode in itself. It was a tough subject. Yeah. Um, and actually, he approached it in such a way that actually made people actually act on it. It wasn't just a an inspirational story. It wasn't just a. I'm telling you, you need to go and do this and people forget it was actually something that people have acted on and it's helped them. So yeah, if you've and... not listened to guys um, episode, it's episode 74, go and give it a listen. And it's, it's one of those things, isn't it, mate? He didn't do it because he wanted a look at me moment. No. Um, and, and he wasn't really, pro he wasn't promoting anything either. He was just no. saying, go and do it. For it sake. It's... Now I know that I've had at least five people contact me because of that show. Yeah, Those five people did go to the doctor and get themselves checked out. Um, I think four out of those five were absolutely fine. 
one of them did have other issues that were life-threatening. And if it wasn't for Guy doing that show, then that person wouldn't be getting treatment. Yeah. And I just... Uh, <clears throat> mate, we always say not everyone contacts us. No. We have no idea how many people know us. But a lot of people have listened to that episode, so... Yeah. Yeah. Guy, you're a legend. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Um. Right. Back, I need to bring myself back up a bit now because... Uh, ladies and gents... What a week. What an absolutely amazing week. Some of the things that are coming in and some of the things that me and Jesse are working on are just ridiculous at the moment. So what we're going to do on this amazing wave of positivity is me and Jesse are going to shut the office for three days and hide from everyone because we're going to go and play arcade games at NerdCon. Woohoo! Yay! See you next week. Back for another riveting instalment of Newton Nuggets. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want to subscribe, it should be up there. If you want to see more of Newton's Nuggets, they're down there. If you want to see more about mental theft stuff, that should be down there somewhere. And the business speaking stuff should be up there. Thank you very much. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.